Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're on beautiful Lake Wabatongashi and Ontario's beautiful North Country. We're guests of Doris and Al Arrington at Arrington Wilderness Lodge. Our quarry for this week, walleye. Now I've run into some tough conditions. We've had a lot of cold fronts move through, so I'm gonna have to be versatile and experiment a lot to make sure I catch fish. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On today's show, we visit Arrington's Wilderness Island Lodge, situated on two secluded islands on Lake Wabatongashi, the second largest lake in the Shaplow Game Preserve. Our host is lodge owner Albert Arrington, an easygoing, soft-spoken man, and he's on a mission to make your stay with him unforgettable. My guide for this trip is Brad Fantham. Don't let his young age fool you. He's one of the most knowledgeable walleye fishers I've met. When coming to Arrington's, you have three choices of how to get there. You can board the train in Sault Ste. Marie in the morning and take a delightful seven-hour journey into the Canadian Shield through the majestic Agawa Canyon to the Lake Wabatongashi flag stop. Or drive to Hawk Junction and board the train about mid-afternoon and arrive at the lake about an hour and a half later. Albert Arrington will meet you at the railroad landing and escort you on a 15-minute boat ride to the island. The third choice is to take a float plane directly to the island resort from Hawk Junction or Sault Ste. Marie using one of the local air services. Got a fish on. Got a fish on. Yes, sir. Nice. Fish on. Got a minnow pattern on. And Brad said that they're feeding around here on minnows. And let's see what I got. It's a nice fish. Whatever it is, it might be a pike. I don't know. I never got a good look at him. Did you see him, Brad? I didn't see it. There's too much of a glare on the surface. It's a big pike. It's a big pike. <laughs> Decent sized pike. I don't have any bite tippet on here, so I'm hoping that he's not sucked it right down. Let's see what we can do here. Let's... Yeah, oh. oh. He got out of there. <laughs> oh, that makes it more exciting. Yeah. I got him. Nice pike. 27 and a half inches. Okay, that's all right. Beauty. Let's get him back in the water here. There he goes. Away he goes. The main species of uh, fish that we uh, people fish for when they come here is, is walleye, and then uh, we all and we also have lots of northern pike. You can have really great perch fishing, uh, a little bit more seasonal during the summer, and in the spring we also do. Uh, do a lot of whitefish fishing as well. Brad stated that he marked a good fish on the sonar and to expect a hit. Same spot always. Yes, sir. I had to add a fly that has a stinger hook on it. I was getting a lot of short hookups and missing the fly, so I put a fly on that has two hooks, one following back. See what we got here in a second. It looks like a walleye to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small walleye. Oh, missed it. There we go. Nice. Okay, pass that's it down a, here. That's a nice walleye. 18 inches. 
Now, straighten your hand out. Your left hand, that's it. Very good, okay. A beauty indeed. And away he goes. Now that hit, that hit differently than a pike. It was sort of just almost like a, a pull, like not a hit, it was like a weight all of a sudden on your fly. And that's when I set the hook and it turned out to be a walleye. So let's try that again. I'm using a sinking line. I gotta get down four or five feet and I have to get down four to five feet. Uh, if you don't get down that far, I don't think they're, they're, that's where the feeding is four to five feet down. So that's how far you gotta get down. So let's try it again. My first day turned out to be short as numerous cold fronts started coming through and the weather turned nasty. It was time to remember safety first and get off the lake. Besides great fishing, we have uh, canoes and kayaks, we have wildlife viewing, we have trails, we have great swimming. Um, the accommodations are very, very comfortable. If you bring your wife, your, your kids, they'll be very, very happy here and comfortable and, and just have a really exciting time while they're enjoying the wilderness. Walleye are one of the most popular game fish in North America. Part of the perch family, walleye are often unpredictable, are constantly on the move, and will bite like crazy one day, but then disappear for no apparent reason the next day. They have big marble-like eyes that have a layer of reflective pigment in the retina. This gives walleye a built-in advantage. They can see well in dim light, but their most common prey, yellow perch, cannot. Our strategy for this morning was first to get on the water at daybreak when the walleye are feeding the heaviest. Then we allow the boat to drift over top of weed lines and drop-offs. Walleye like structure, such as weed lines, as they attract bait fish. And they are also attracted to drop-offs. It allows the walleye to go deeper and stay out of the bright light after they feed. The technique I'm using is the same as spin fishers who are using a jig. It's a systematic jerking of the line to make the fly go up and then down. Walleye always seem to hit when the fly is falling. Fish on, yes sir. Don't know how big it is. Uh. Just feels small again. Got a walleye. It's a walleye. Well, that's good. Pass her over here. Pass her over to Bill. And nice small walleye. If you're into eating walleye, this will probably be the perfect eating size. So that's that's a good start. That's a good start. It's early morning. We've been out probably 15 minutes, so that's good. Minnow patterns are the are the the day's choice. And I'll show you right now what it is. It's it's called a deceiver, or a lefty's deceiver, and it, in, it imitates a small minnow. And this is what they're feeding on right now. So that's one, let's see if we can do it again. And I have to retie because I got a nick. Walleye do have teeth, so yeah, you gotta check, I got a nick right there. So I'll retie. One of the dilemmas that you run into when coming to a strange lake is what do I do first? Now, walleye traditionally is not what fly fishers go after, so I was kind of racking my brains as to what to do. So I went up to some of the fishermen here that were doing very well and asked them what they were using. And they said they were using this jerk bait. Now, this jerk bait is also a suspension bait. Now, what that means is when this goes down to a certain level, it remains there even if you stop it. So when they would jerk this and stop it, it would remain at three to four feet down. Well, what do I do here? I look at the color and maybe the size of, mainly I think in, it's the color. So what I did was I tried to match my fly the best way I could to it. Now, this isn't nearly as, as long, but I have the right color combination. And when this is wet, 
it looks almost the same type of green as that lure does. Now, how do I make that suspend? Well, what I did was I attached it to an intermediate sinking line. Now, this intermediate clear sinking line only sinks three to four feet. There was my suspension. I did that combined with the right fly and did exactly what the spin fishers were doing. I jerked it. Jerk, stop, jerk, stop. And every time it stopped, I seemed to get a hit. And I was very successful doing that. The most productive fly was a chartreuse deceiver. But another good choice would be a chartreuse clouser minnow, an orange and black clouser minnow, and for the times when the walleye are eating leeches, a black bunny leech. Fish on. Fishing off a point here. Land points are big when fishing for walleye. It, whatever happens on land, the shape of the land, you, it continues underneath the water. And these fish will stack up and feed off these points. Haven't seen him as of walleye. yet. Another nice walleye. One. It's a good one this time. Yeah, that's a nice walleye. It's a nice walleye, yeah. And again, land points. We've had a number of fronts, a number of fronts pass through. And we're waiting on good weather right now. And it looks like we got some stable weather and we're getting more fish. It's been a pretty rough go. It's been a pretty rough go with the weather. Um, you can't help Mother Nature. Sometimes she works against you. But right now, the weather's stable and looks like the fishing's picking up. Fish on. Fish on. Fish and structure. All structure. You fish structure, you're gonna find fish. Again, I, I say it all the time. Proper presentation, with, along with the fly, put it where it should be, and you'll have a success. Yeah, I think you got another walleye here. I think I got another walleye, yeah, he's staying down. Yep. Oh, this is a little bigger. Oh, got him, guy. pass him back here, please. Sure. Yes, sir. Another uh, not, not eater. Not bigger. Another, another, another eating size. Whoop. <laughs> and a professional release again. Just slipped right out of my hands. I didn't want to hold on to them too tight. I'm gonna release them. If I hold on to them too tight, I'll end up hurting them. So, hey, let's continue going. This has been a good morning so far. Um, I'm very happy about uh, our success right here, right now. We made the choice to get up early. Uh, we've been out here since before 7 a.m., just after sunrise. That helps when, it, when, you're, when you're talking about walleye. Uh, they don't like the bright sun. As the sun comes up in the afternoon, they tend to shut down. So we're hopefully we'll get a full morning in of fishing. Well, what I like to look for when I'm fishing walleye in the spring is rock structure. And that's because in the spring, you don't have as much bait fish as you have throughout the summer due to the cooler water temperatures and the bait fish haven't hatched yet. So you've got bigger bait fish hanging around and they don't have structure like weeds that have grown up yet. So they need structure and protection like rocks. And uh, <clears throat> I like to find them in shallower water than you'll find them in the summer. So anywhere from four feet to 12 feet seems to be the depth that you'll find walleye in the spring. As you move further into the summer, the water temperatures warm up and weeds start to grow. And then you also got bait fish hatching, which like to use the weeds as structure. And then that's when the walleye start to move into the weeds and they like to hang out around drop-offs on weed beds. And they'll move up into the weeds, feed on small perch and bait fish, move back down into the cooler waters and the drop-offs. And that's exactly what we were doing today when we were catching the walleye, was fishing right on the edge of those weed beds. And then in September, they start to go back into the shallow areas because the water temperature starts to cool down again. And I like to fish them around those rocks again, those areas. And a lot of the bait that you'll find around the rocks that they're feeding on is the crayfish and the larger minnows. 
And one of the things we really enjoy is for people, as, as far as running the resort, is seeing people eat really good food and eat well and really enjoy the meals here. So we have very high quality, delicious meals. Uh, things like rock Cornish game hen, prime roast beef, uh, things like that. So really, really good food, very filling. Um, and uh, I think uh, something that really uh, sets your taste buds that after the end of a long day, it really tastes really delicious. The setups I used on this trip were a clear intermediate line to a four foot section of 12 pound test and then the fly. I also used a full sinking line to a four foot section of 12 pound test and then the fly when I felt the fish were closer to the bottom. As the sun got higher in the sky, the bite seemed to slow down quite a bit. Walleye are notorious for moving around, especially when the sun is high. It was time to try something different. This morning, I tried casting at first and moving around, but we weren't covering a lot of water. What we wanted to try to do is find the fish first, and then we can stop and cast. So I've been forced to troll. I know this is a, a not palatable to most fly fishers, but we are forced to do what we have to do at times. Now, when trolling for walleye, you don't just leave the, the line slack or line tight. You pull back and forth, move the fly, give it some action. This is what they want, and they'll always hit it on the back. Mark the fish, bang -o. And it feels like another walleye running right at me. They do, they tend to do that, I guess. As fast as I can wheel it in, that's when he's coming. Now he's, at the end, that's when they make their stand. Sure enough, yeah, now he's starting to, <laughs> he's starting to dig his heels in. Another good walleye. Yes, man. Yeah, pass it back, everybody. Oh, another one, well, let's get my forceps out right away. And most times, if you hold a fish upside down like that, they tend to uh, settle down. And that's not a bad one, good eater. It's what most people look for when they're fishing for walleye because you really can't beat the taste of them, that's for sure. Another one down, and I'm having a pretty good morning. Pretty good morning. This chop that you see on the water, they call it a walleye chop, and this is what you want. You don't want dead calm waters. You want a little bit of chop. I, I think it breaks up the light, and that makes them uh, move around a little more. So this is exactly what you want, a little breeze. It's, it's perfect for walleye, perfect for walleye. As the sun rose higher and higher in the sky, the fishing got tougher and tougher. It was time to head back in and relax in the lodge and wait for the evening bite. My stay at Arrington's Wilderness Island Lodge has been nothing short of spectacular. The comfortable and relaxed atmosphere is enhanced by the many amenities, such as the dining room, the lounge, large stone fireplace, deck, and veranda overlooking the lake. There are six suites adjacent to the lodge. Each suite consists of a bedroom with two twin beds or a king-size bed, a four-piece bathroom, and a coffee center. There's also cabins that are very comfortably situated in scenic secluded surroundings. These are very private. Also provided are 18 foot cedar strip boats with 9.9 .9 electric start outboard motors, swivel pedestal seats, and sonar. I highly recommend you give them a call for your next vacation. Good one too. Yes, very good one. Well, let's see what I got. It's after supper. We've come out for another hour or so of fishing. Nice walleye, nice. That's a good one, yeah. 
Yeah, this is a much, much better fish. That's some over here then, sir. That's a much nicer walleye. I, as soon as he hit, I could tell that he was a bigger fish. So, let's get her ready now. Take her down. Oh, the way it goes. Brad decided to take us right into the weed beds. He figures the fish have moved in, and I think he's right. You may got a pike or that. It's the pike, I think. Probably a small pike. Yeah. Really didn't get a good look at him. Might be a walleye. It could be a walleye, I don't know. That's a walleye. It is so. It's yeah. a nice size walleye. Yeah. Another one about the same size as the last one. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Just very nice fish. You gotta be careful right here. These are very sharp. They're rakers and they can cut you. But uh, and again, the last thing that a minnow sees <laughs> before it goes down the hatch. <laughs> and and away you go. <laughs> I think you might want to check your lead. Oh, I definitely got to check my leader on that one. But that was that was the way the versatility that we're talking about is is Brad decided, well, we weren't taking anything on the weed line, so let's move right into the weeds. And the weeds are about four feet down, which is perfect for this because this is going right over top of them. Well, we certainly had tough conditions on this show, and it just goes to show you through determination and experimentation, you can be successful. For more information on today's show and other shows in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.